GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. From wherever we decide studios broadcasted live on iTunes, Spreaker, and worldwide, this is the Turnbuckle Talk Radio Podcast with your host, the producer, Hat G. The G stands for gangsta. And now kick back and get ready for the eargasms. <laughs> Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the TTRP. Uh, it is the continuation of St. Patrick's Day weekend. It is Sunday morning. Dan is trapped in his bathroom with a turtle and coffee. That's how we do things on the show. Um, <laughs> but welcome in, Dan, Sergeant Fury. I'm Patchy. You know how it is, the TTRP. Uh, and unfortunately, we need to start off the show on a November very somber note uh the wrestling world lost another uh star to the wrestlemania heaven above and that is scott hall aka razor ramon aka the diamond stud uh but scott hall nonetheless uh finally succumbed to his uh demons so to speak unfortunately uh hell due to health complications and finally was taken off life support and passed away this previous week. Um, the wrestling world kind of saw it coming um, because there was the news that dropped that Scott Hall was on life support due to having a heart attack um, while recovering. And fortunately things just didn't get better. Um, Kevin Nash went to say that he was on life support his family, and then his family was trying to decide what to do. And finally, the decision was made to pull the life support and Scott Hall went as peacefully as he could. Uh, condolences to the Hall family, of course, from us here, as well as the wrestling world, from all the tweets and statements made. But to speak about the man Scott Hall, like he influenced so many people from people that are now to like on television today to people that are in independent wrestling. There's a lot of people that credit Scott Hall for being the spark for them into pro wrestling, for being a influence to them in pro wrestling or adaptating certain things from his uh, Razor Ramon character or the the true life persona he gave uh, during the late 90s with the NWO. The man was very good in the ring and he is one of the names that you mention as one of the greatest in the business never to win a heavyweight championship. Probably in the modern era of professional wrestling, uh, and I, I call it modern because I would like to say 25 years to 30 years and prior, uh, definitely after the run of Hulkamania, probably the, the post-warrior era of pro wrestling. He is one of those names that comes up where you do a double take where you're like, how did he never win the big one? Like, you know, a, a major world heavyweight championship. But then you go on to, to think and you're like, he was at one point the most winningest intercontinental champion in the history of the WWF, WWE. He was one of the tenured WCW tag team champions. You have to remember during that time with uh, the New World Order when they were absolutely red hot. Uh, the Outsiders were the tag team of pro wrestling in a time where tag team wrestling was on a, a downslope. 
or was really in a rebuilding phase. Uh, you know, they held the title in WCW uh, for for years. If you think about it, like almost a year and a half with a couple of breaks here and there for, for storyline purposes. And you also have to think about the mind of Scott Hall in what he was able to accomplish in the wrestling ring. And we, you can look back as a fan and if you want to look at moments in the Monday Night War, sure, the launch of Nitro was the start of the Monday Night War. That was the spark. That was the initial, like, you know, Flint hitting steel, like, hey, here's this. To me and to a lot of wrestling aficionados, a lot of wrestling fanboys, the true, the true first spark or the you know first lighting of a bomb that went off with the Monday Night War was actually May of 96 when Scott Hall came through the crowd and interrupted uh, the Mahler and Scott Doss's uh, match on Nitro with yep. Colonel Parker and just grabs the mic and starts cutting the, the now infamous you know who I am but you don't know why I'm here and with that one sentence, Scott Hall took himself from a mid-card talent that was over during the new generation of professional wrestling to a main event status guy. Because at that time, the internet was a thing, but you were relying on dirt sheets and, and newsletters. You You knew that Scott Hall had left, but you... I don't think fans appreciated Razor Ramon in WWF in 96 because he was kind of doing that classic, what is now known as like the winding down yes. of a character yeah. where he lost the Intercontinental title to Goldust. Uh, you know, he was not on WrestleMania that year. And really, he was kind of, you know, I right towards the end of, you know, you know in your house, good friends, better enemies, where that was kind of the swan song of Scott of uh, Kevin Nash in WWF as as uh, Diesel. You kind of didn't think of Scott Hall, and that's what we refer to. You know, that's kind of like the classic wind down now of a character on WWE TV. They take him off TV, they start pushing other guys. You might see him once, and then he he goes into the pantheon. Yeah, um, and the thing with scott hall is scott hall at that time when he when he walked out through the crowd on that wcw monday night show in may of 96 um people knew who he was and but a lot of people that were younger at that time because at that at that time may of 96 i i was yeah, I was 12. But like, yeah, you, but I knew who Scott Hall was because you remember the early days of WCW and and him being the Diamond Stud with Diamond Dallas Page and even even earlier in in the early days of his career and from the NWR from AWA with Kurt Henning. Like you knew Big Scott who, Hall, yeah. Like you knew he was because like he his look while his look changed his features really never did he was still he was still a tall very built guy yeah he grew, shaved the mustache grew the hair because of the different times and everything and that was kind of and like you said it, that was kind of the first major devastating hit that WWE took because Yes, a lot of people um, when they did when they did the like the Monday Night War documentary and everything, and Vince and Vince talked about the first Monday Night Show from the Mall of America, and goes, "Whoa, this is real competition." Yes, D do I believe Vince McMahon thought that? Absolutely. And even when Lex Luger appeared, you're kind of like, "Whoa, okay, all right," but. But the thing is, is for most wrestling fans, we all know Lex, Lex Luger had already been in WCW. He was an he was an established main eventer there at one point in time. So mm -hmm. all that all that was was kind of like, 
all right, he didn't, he got moved on from in the WWF because the WWF went with the new generation because the quote unquote feeling was the Lex Luger, the Lex Luger experiment to replace Hulk Hogan didn't work. And also you have to think, um, you know, Scott Hall, Big Scott Hall was not the first star to nope. have been in AWA and then gone on to WCW. And mind you, this is when WCW was not drawing. This is when yeah, they were is, having a hard time filling yeah. arenas. This and you WCW, had WCW like in the later stages of G- being Jim Crockett promotions and yes. then in the early After- stages of WCW when Ted Turner fought it because pro wrestling, but you had the likes of of Ole Anderson and Jim Hurd and guys that didn't guys that were wrestling guys, they didn't know what they had. And you know, this was also the time where we're gonna we're gonna like make some hilarious comments right now. It is strange to think at one time you had mean Mark Callis, uh Vinny Vegas, yep, the diamond stud. Yep. And and Ron Simmons. Yep. All in one company at yep. one time. And all, they also with the likes of Rick Flair, Sting, Lex Luger, yep. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and countless others. And you had this like crop of guys that were not viewed as main event talent. Nope. So then all of a sudden, with you know the last couple names notwithstanding, they were already. Yeah. But then they go up to WWF, and all of a sudden, it's like, we got Razor Ramon, who was kind of Razor Ramon with, with the Diamond Stud gimmick, thanks to DDP. Yeah. And then you, then you have, you know, Vinny Vegas, who becomes Diesel, who becomes one of the most loved care, big men in the business. And then I don't know what happened to that mean Mark Callis guy. I really hope things worked out for him. <laughs> that, that, uh, I know that unfortunately that movie career didn't that the movie career didn't pan out for him after uh, mm-hmm. Suburban Commando. No, I mean his movie career went nowhere. Hopefully he don't. Hopefully it didn't end up dead in the water or anything. Now who knows if he'd have a Hall of Fame career by now? But you you got to look at what Scott Hall did coming in as Razor Ramon with those great vignettes. And here's another thing that that I talked about on the Necrocast account this week briefly, but it really came to my mind throughout the week. Scott Hall was one of the first characters during that new generation, right? Yep. That drew upon a movie. Now, mind you, the Road Warriors flat out stole their name from the Road Warrior movie with Mel Gibson. Oh, absolutely. The Legion of, the Legion of Doom, the name for the original Legion of Doom was straight up stolen from a Super Friends cartoon as admitted by Animal. You yep. know, there were other wrestlers who would borrow from movies liberally and maybe put a little aspect of that character in, but wouldn't go full, full bore. Scott Hall was Tony Montana through and yeah. through. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I laughed the other day when I was at the gym with my boss and he was like, yeah, Razor Ramon died. I said, yeah, you know, only in 1991, 92, could you have a white guy playing a Cuban guy ripping off Scarface and make millions of dollars in merchandise and no one would bat an eye. Yeah. Only in and, the nineties could you get away with and that. What was, and what was funny with, with Scott Hall is yeah, Scott Hall was a typical white guy, but it, but the way that his build was and the way that his, he did his tan, it like it, you didn't truly like view him as being like you thought he was he was like mixed he was like uh cuban like he had I thought he was a cuban american yeah absolutely like, i thought he was a cuban american and then growing up and and like my brother's like dude this is scarface well what's scarface and then you watch the movie and you're like oh my god and then yep. you kind of laugh at that because you know Al, you have an italian man playing a cuban american in that movie so it's like yep. no one cared but the funny part about it is, is that I hate to say it, 
uh, Scott Hall was a better Scarface than Andrade is a Scarface. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. doing that gimmick off better than he could. Yeah, but and Scott Hall was was able to take an aspect of the movies and yep. transition it into that. I mean, Razor Ramon. If you think about the the connotations of the name, it's like. Yes, it was a cool name, but then you go back and you see the source material. It's like, man, you use a razor blade to cut up cocaine. No one thought about this as a kid. We were just like, oh, yeah, well, let's get a razor blade necklace and, you know, use nope. machismo. Yeah. And, nope. No, and no, no, one, Hall, yeah. no one thought about it. No, nope. you know, the innocence of being 12 and 14. But Scott Hall was so instrumental in a lot of some of the biggest matches of all time and the innovations that came from it. Yep. Everyone then, likes to point to the ladder match. Oh, yeah, the ladder, the ladder match. And what was like, and we talk about the, inf- the influentialness that Scott Hall had. Like, and yes, Scott Hall had his demons, his demons. We all know that they were well documented through, through his friendship with DDP and everything to the point where Scott Hall at one point we thought Scott Hall was going to go a lot sooner than he did. And do you remember the, the wrestling show and it's been documented and it was documented in his, where he showed up. I remember I was just starting in the business and that show actually took place like two hours from, from where I am in in the Glens Falls uh, hacksaw region. And I knew guys who were on that show and I asked them, I was like, I, you know, here I am getting into the business, but also being an extremely huge wrestling fan. Yep. And I, I asked, I was like, how bad was it? And they were like, they gave me the story you didn't hear. Yeah. And you're just kind of sitting there and you're like, oh my God. And it's like, you're right. We came real close many times yep. to losing Scott Hall. And the fact that he was able to clean up his life. Yep. He was able to reconnect with his family. He was able to, to come back to professional wrestling in such a, a dramatic way, almost a different person. He was able to be there at raw 25. He, the great WrestleMania moment with the NWO versus DX in the sting. Um, yeah. Triple H, sting match. Triple H match. Like he, and to th- he, like Scott Hall had the, Scott Hall that had the finish to his wrestling career that he he deserved to yes. have like big memorable moments and have that Hall of Fame introduction being so instrumental in for wrestling and yes uh, the discuss that's a discussion for another day of course, with the WWE Hall of Fame is it just a true WWE Hall of Fame or is it a wrestling Hall of Fame? I, I sidebar, it's a wrestling hall of fame. If you look at, at a lot point, of them, yes, it's a wrestling hall. It's a wrestling slash entertainment hall of fame because you do have like the celebrity wing and granted some of the celebrities are questionable, but, um, yeah. consider, but the thing is, is Scott Hall had, and then when like Scott Hall, was very instrumental. The ladder match there, there was, um, I know a lot. I know people have talked about doing a, um, renaming the money in the bank match, the Scott hall invitational, like because of the ladder match, um, yep. and everything, but it was the like stories that over the last week that you heard, um, one of the stories that I saw posted online, was when Scott Hall did a double uh, double appearance for PWR in Erie, PA, and AIW in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, one of the people from AIW posted how the students were responsible for driving him, at, picking him up from the airport, driving him, so on and forth. And they went into the story about how Scott Hall covered all the gas. Scott Hall covered all the meals and Mm -hmm. Scott Hall was said that it's the vet's responsibility to take care of the young and up, up, up and coming guys, because when he was, when he was a young and upcoming guy, um, the vet, that's what the vets did because 
you you don't know where you're going to be at the later stages of your career after being a name, after making money. And that's not the first time. Uh, High Voltage Omar, who uh, drove Scott Hall around for a series of matches in the Northeast over the span of some time. Will spilled on the couch. <sighs> Pause. <laughs> Give me one sec. Yeah. Omar. So in recent, um, a couple years ago, before the pandemic, Scott Hall did a tour of the Northeast and the person that was chosen to, to drive him around was HBO, High Voltage Omar, a good friend of mine. And Omar said that they went out to a restaurant. I'm sure Omar won't mind me telling this story. No. And Scott Hall and him sat down and Omar is like in awe of the fact, it's Scott Hall. This, this, uh, yeah. this, this is Scott Hall. Oh, he's having dinner with a childhood hero. And the waitress comes to order, and Scott Hall just looks at him and goes, yo, I got it. And orders for Omar. Orders yeah. like a three-course dinner for Omar, including like steak and, and salads and all that other stuff. And, oh, yo, know, he wasn't drinking, so they, they did not drink out of respect. You know, he, he didn't want to be that guy. Yeah, and they he said he drove around for two days and it was the best two days of his life. He was like, because Scott Hall was so cool and he could just talk to him and pick his brain about not only wrestling, but like real life and all that yep. other stuff. And, you know, I told my story briefly of when Scott Hall was brought in for a VIP session to Whitehall for uh, World of Hurt Wrestling. And one of the coolest things to me was, you know, he's taking pictures with guys downstairs and Mikey Cheese actually did a cheese vest like the NWO. It was melted cheese. Yeah. And Scott Hall was like, hey, you're going to owe me some money for this. You know, do I get a <laughs> cut of the, the merch tonight? Go get around. But he looked up the Fox Vineyard and was like, man, I really like your look. And I'm standing upstairs because I had to do a promo. And I'm in one of my, my business suits, you know, one of my McGregor suits, as I call. And he just walks by. I shake his hand. And he goes, it's a very nice suit. I'm like, thank you. And I'm like, I had nothing to say to this man. Why are you talking to me? I yeah. am not. I'm, I am I am an idiot with a baseball bat. That is all I am. I am a dipshit in a three-piece suit. And this was the kind of thing is that, you know, and, and this was mentioned over the, the course of the last week is that by a lot of guys uh, within the industry that, for all of his demons, that man had a heart of gold. And, oh, absolutely. And I think that that is, he is a prime example of you can care, you can have demons, right? And, and, and struggle and have such problems, but still be a good guy at heart. And yep. I think, I think that if anything that we can take out of, of the passing of Scott Hall, I mean, over over complications with a surgery, no less. You know, three heart attacks due to a complication with a surgery. I think the one thing that we can take away from all of this is that, you know, he was able to end his career on his terms. And he he had years left, you know, but oh absolutely. The the the, the physical turnaround that he had thanks to D, thanks to Diamond Dallas Page. Um like Dallas Page extended his life extremely. Dallas Page has done the same thing for Jake Roberts. Um, but Scott Hall, unfortunately, at the end of the day, Scott Hall falls in the same line as Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero got his life back together, had a hell of a finish to his career, but those past demons due to the effects of those past demons, it ended up causing, it ended up taking his life. Yeah. And, you know, uh, uh, the one thing uh, that we can say about Scott Hall is, you know, at one point in time, he was going to be a cautionary tale, which I think the wrestling business has way too many of those. In oh, yeah. the end, 
in the end, though, I think that Scott Hall's life and legacy is that you can overcome these demons yep. and and leave a legacy that people are going to be proud of. We talk about Eddie Guerrero in such high regard, oh, high regard, yeah. like like wrestling. Like I, I saw a joke, uh, a meme that there are two Latinos that you are not allowed to talk badly about. And it was a picture of Selena and it was a picture of Eddie Guerrero. And I sat there and I crossed my arms. I'm like, if that's not the most accurate meme on planet <laughs> Earth, like what I w- one person made the mistake on Twitter of, of, of commenting about how Eddie Guerrero was not as good as we think he was. And the entire wrath of yeah, the yeah, Internet. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't just wrestling fans like it like, was just every it was everybody. It was, like there is no reason that Cardi B should be posting being like you're a moron. And yep. like you're sitting here and you're like Cardi B just defended Eddie Guerrero. I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> it is, what, what year what year is it like and what what's funny is what's funny is Scott Scott Hall's going Scott Hall's going to live in history. He's going to yeah. Like there's the ladder match from WrestleMania 10. There's the creation of the NWO. There's the moments he had the mo the his Hall of Fame speech. His Hall mm-hmm. his his Hall of Fame speech. Like Scott Hall had moments that he will forever be remembered by, and it's one of those things of Scott Hall had a wealth of knowledge of what to do and what not to do in the business and i'm sure he gave that knowledge and advice to numerous people throughout the business and throughout his time doing independent shows autograph signings appearances and that um it's an unfortunate situation that we did lose him but once again condolences to all family and and as a lot of people on social media uh, quoted uh, that speech of this, the Hall of Fame speech, which you you use, and then I uh, I I borrowed, um, and that yeah, I borrowed no. because there there was no because that's all you could do. Yeah, I mean, bad times don't last, but bad guys do. And pro wrestling lost the bad guy. Yeah. So it, it absolutely sucks. Condolences to the Hall family and everyone who was connected to him in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, the best part about it is, is if you, because you have to look at a bright side, is there is a generation of wrestlers that are working today who are handing down their love of Scott Hall uh, through osmosis, if you will, to the new fans that will become yep. the new wrestlers of tomorrow. Yep. So Scott Hall's legacy, whether it's the click, the NWO, or just being a really great guy, will live. Yeah, on. and what and what the most the one of the most interesting facts that I found out was when, and I know a lot of people have issues with the man, but you got to give the man due for his 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 bevy of bro- of everything with pro wrestling and it's Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, when he did the tribute on Twitter, stated that if it wasn't for Scott Hall, there is no Hollywood Hogan. And if there was no Scott Hall, there'd be no Sting as we know him today. Very true. I mean, I will, I will be the first person to say as much as I love Sting, there was a moment in time where Sting's career was not what it was. And had it not been for the NWO and had it not been for Scott Hall's conversation, like, I'm not telling you to rip off the dead man, but have you seen this movie? Yeah. I think you could do it. And really gave us the best storyline in WCW history arguably sting versus the entire nwo for a year and a half yep and sting while sting wasn't ever truly representing anyone he was he was himself he got tired of the politics and the the questioning and 
he's like, I am now a free agent. And Scott Hall Scott Hall showed him the crow and that first the 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 black and white crow stink. Which now works with Darby Allen on AEW every week. And that is, you know, you can play the six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon game. Oh, yeah. In Hollywood, you could play the six degrees of separation because if you look at Damian Priest, Damian Priest is very much an offshoot of the Scott Hall character of today. Yeah. Britt Baker doing the tribute in her match with Thunder Rosa in San Antonio. This yeah, with week. the with uh, the with the gear. I mean, you look at Matt Cardona winning the uh Intercontinental title at WrestleMania in a ladder match, having seen Scott Hall win the Intercontinental title in the garden in a ladder match. Yep. And taking the the photos. It's like all of these things are going to Hey y'all, we are going to take a short break from the show real quick just to pay some bills. Uh, please do us a favor. If you like what you hear, like what you see, please drop a subscription or follow to gearnetwork.com as well as the TTRP Turnbuckle Talk Radio podcast. That way you get notified when we have new episodes go up via your podcast services. Thank you. And now back to the show. Continuously intertwined. And there are a lot of pro wrestlers that never had the staying power of a Scott Hall. No. And oh my God. He, he left a, a, he didn't leave a thumbprint. He left a boot print. Oh, absolutely. One that he he may, and we started at the top of the show mentioning it. Him and Roddy Piper are prime examples of you don't need to be the, win the big one. Nope. To be the big one. Nope. Not at all. Uh, And they're like, and that, that whole, because there's that, there is that thing. There is that, there's that, that so-called, um separation between pro re- what pro wrestling was in the 60s and 70s and and early 80s to what it became and and as you said that modern era like Scott Hall Roddy Piper Ted DiBiase Kurt Henning these are guys that like make that were kind of came up came up in that late 70s, early 80s time and were basically unknowns, but then were, became so much bigger and left the business to where they never won a world championship, but you know who they are because they were so influential because of the things that they said and did. And he, he being Scott Hall, is a prime example of in this modern era. You don't need to be, you don't need to be world heavyweight champion to have everyone around you say, "Yeah, he didn't." He, you know, classically with certain guys, they don't need a belt. Scott Hall, Scott Hall won titles, but he didn't need the belt. No, to be the bad guy. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he did it. He, absolutely. Um, but we are going to stay within the realm of WWE and go towards the, the, uh, <laughs> the call-ups that have recently happened. Um, and the name, of course, a uh, week, weeks ago, there was the name change of Walter. Uh, <laughs> The the new the newly branded Gunther, okay, formerly, okay, all right, all right, formerly known you. as Walter, and yeah, then right. and now um you have Butch, formerly known yes. as Pete Dunn. Um, unfor- <sighs> the unfortunate situation. Uh, it was an unfortunate situation that Pete Dunn was called up because of the situation that happened after the introduction of the person formerly known as Pete Dunn, and that being the unfortunate injury to Big E. 
and yes, taking the over the head belly to belly suplex from Ridge Holland, uh, landing on his head and essentially breaking his neck. Now, Biggie did go into uh, state. Biggie did go into uh, Twitter and Instagram and posted videos giving updates. He was fine. He had he didn't have lost of strength and everything. Essentially, yes, his neck is broken. It's going to be he's going to be out for an undetermined amount of time. Uh, I believe he said it was his C one and C six vertebrae. Essentially, yep. And, uh, no spinal, no spinal yeah. damage, no loss of strength, no torn ligaments. Yes, uh, just fractures. Now uh, there are those out there who will say any break in the C one. Uh, is is a career ending break. Now, mind yes. you, we are we are not we are not medical professionals here on the no. TCRP. <laughs> no. We pretend to be when it comes to to matters of this and stuff that we have we, we do we do research and we follow the science. <laughs> yes, we follow the science. You know, we rogue in it. But so the idea is is that it's supposedly a career ending injury. That being said, we do not know the extent of the break. Uh, Big E would not be as optimistic. I don't feel if this was the end, you know what I mean? Yeah. And also the fact that there is no ligament damage, there's no spinal cord damage. There's no, uh, disc deterioration from what we know. It was simply a, a, a fracture in both the one and the six. That being said, given time to heal, let this be a testament to the physical prowess of Big E and that thunderously huge neck of his, that that he yeah that that's that he took a because, landing because he because it is stated that he won't need to get surgery and no. he didn't suffer and while you you said there was no damage to his spinal cord, um he he did he did uh post on his Twitter yes uh back on March seventeenth in the afternoon he's like. I'm just here to provide a brief life update right now. I'm walking around my neighborhood. It's 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. We're in this matching street fighter uh, showing it, showing his cli- life is good. He's like, I got breath in my lungs. It's a beautiful day. Got little, got my little taco meat out, chest hair, what, and that. He's like, that's my life. That's what's going on in my life. My neck might be broken, but my heart is still the, in there, I think. So... I love that man. Like, I love the that positivity man. that this man is like going through, like showing and exuberating during this like major injury and uh, major injury. Like, and this is the thing. Yeah. They, they state the C C1 is generally a career under 30 years ago. Absolutely. Uh, I would even go so far as to say like 15 years ago. Yeah. Let's let, let, let's look at, at what we are now in the the 20 years ago. A torn quadricep was a career yeah. ending injury. Yeah. Yeah. Tell that to Triple H. Okay? Yeah. Um, also, uh, spinal stenosis was a career ending injury. At, look at, look, look Edge. at Edge and Seamus. And Daniel Bryan. And, yeah, and okay. Daniel Bryan. Uh, you know, you you are having these injuries that due to modern science. Now, I'm not like once again, I am not saying that he's ever going to wrestle again. Will he wrestle potentially a different style? Will we see Big E diving through the ropes at uh, you know 300 plus pounds? Probably not. Just just as a safety precaution for his neck. Yeah. Will we see him probably? Um, do a lot more tags in order to save any kind of potential for injury? Probably. But the WWE medical staff is not going to put him in there if there is a potential that that is not 100% healed. Once again, fracture, not broken, no spinal damage, yeah. no ligaments. And, and he he's it, it's going to take time to heal. It's, to, which, yes. And mind it's you, good. Stone Cold Steve Austin had neck surgery. Major yeah. neck surgery. Yep. Kurt Angle had major neck surgery. We have had wrestlers who've had neck surgeries. Edge, two of them. If yeah, you think the, about it, the one they've in had 2002. The, the, neck, the neck fusions. Yeah, and Big E does not have to go through that. 
Nope. So we're, we're lucky. Um, now, mind you, following the, the page uh, neck injury, will they be a little bit more uh, cautious? Potentially. There's, there's a potential to make sure that, that Big E could compete at that championship level. It sucks that this happened right at WrestleMania season, and it sucks that formerly known as Pete Dunn got a front row seat for that drop. I mean, I watched it once, and that was enough. Um, yeah. And, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> So the other, the other, the other side of this, the other side of this is um, a few, a few news outlets uh, were reporting the thing, um, and right now, uh, Ridge Holland had was reportedly very apologetic about the spot. Um, said that uh, there it had been reported that WWE sources added that the former NXT star handled himself well behind the scenes. There was no heat on Holland as he did, didn't do anything outrageously wrong that caused the bump. Um, it was Holland was very apologetic, very sorry about what happened backstage. He handled himself well. Uh, so there's no, it was, it wasn't anything reckless. It was, it was, it seemed like it was something that Big E wasn't exactly ready for. Um, and it was just a, it was just an unfortunate accident that did happen. Um, so though it seems like that, uh, one of the things that came out was a unnamed talent did explain that what might've gone wrong and, it does seem that Holland may have hooked Big E lower than usual and didn't have the right control while when tossing him over his head. Um, though it, 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 it's not coming off shelflessness or recklessness. It was just, yeah. The, the one time that I watched it, yeah, it, it looked and, you know, I'm not going to armchair quarterback this one and I'm not going to say, well, this guy should be fired. I watched it the once. It looked like an unfortunate accident. It did not look reckless, in my opinion. It just looked like the move didn't go over well. And I'm not a huge fan of the belly-to-belly toss suplex like that anyway. No. Um, I I feel like there are factors that can that can come in that this was a, a prime example of it. Um I, I I'm, with yeah, that move it, with that move, it's it with that move, it's especially doing the belly to belly toss over the top, like lifting your opponent over. Like that's something that very few men can do because uh, because of what can happen, and if you don't have the strength, nor the nor be able to like have the actual bridge to do it, because when you look at it, when because I saw it the one time, like when it happened, um, how it just seemed like Holland didn't have enough, like either grabbed him too low, and or didn't have the proper grip to do it because. As soon as yeah. as soon as you see Holland start to bridge and Big E go, like Big E doesn't have enough momentum to get the actual flip. And you know, there's a there's a lot of factors that go into it because you have to think plus, the hip flexion. Plus you were plus you were doing it on the outside, which doesn't give you that added bonus of that spring that you get inside a ring. Yeah, because you know the momentum of coming off of the ropes, which yep. classically guys like Brock or Kurt would do, where you know off the ropes grab hook with the throw. Um, you know he was doing it from a, a standing position, just straight back. Yep. There's a lot of hip flexion. There's a lot of uh, hip flexor flexor muscles that are used in that uh, momentum. And you know it's an unfortunate accident that happened to a great guy who is handling it in quite possibly the happiest, most positive way, because like you, you know, talked about his statement, he's above ground, he's walking around, he's got air in his lungs, 
He's just got to do the one thing that at this time of year is absolutely tough for a competitor to do. And that's take time off during WrestleMania season, because we've seen uh, wrestlers with injuries documented sitting around at WrestleMania time. Yeah. Uh, classic, classically, because we have to mention him once a podcast Finn Balor with the torn, everything from the buckle bomb had to sit back and do WrestleMania access when he was cleared to wrestle at mania had they had something for him yeah you know there there have been other competitors that have been injured right before mania time where it's like oh like this is the build to mania and i just got shelved yeah and it, well, and Ray, it, randy orton being one of them randy orton being one of them uh, uh, uh seth rollins as well jeff hardy was yep. one of them uh, you know, there have been guys who have uh, Rey Mysterio has got injured literally like a month before a WrestleMania. And you're just like, oh, shit, Rey Batista tearing his tricep muscle uh, before yep. heading into WrestleMania 22. You have these cases of these guys who who have to live with it. And it's part of the business. And it's an unfortunate part of the business. Oh, yeah. But. You know, let this not take away from the fact that a couple of weeks ago, you and I had a conversation where we were contemplating, is this going to be a good WrestleMania? Like, is this going to be? a Yeah. And with that being said, after Elimination Chamber, this is actually tuning up to be a really good WrestleMania. Like, this might actually be. Yeah. One of one of the best WrestleManias match for match so far that we've had in quite some time, mainly because there is the build around Cowboy Brock, which I love the fact that that's what they're calling him now. That makes me so happy. Cowboy <laughs> Brock is a thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, versus Roman Reigns, who's in God mode. Who The fact that they put that on a t-shirt is ballsy by WWE that they're yeah. even like... And, and right now, because right now, this is this is the this is the lineup that they have going on right now. Um, yep. Night one, Becky Lynch defending the Raw Women's Championship against Bianca Belair potentially. Um, WWE recently put out a medical update uh, saying Bianca may be out uh, out of commission for a undisclosed amount of time, which I think I don't think Bianca is going to be at me. I I think Bianca may be cleared. But she's not going to be ready because no. I think this is going to slide in a perfect opportunity for the return of Bailey. Yes, because, I think that. Yes, because Bianca, because it is WrestleMania, you need you need the big name matchup. And and last Becky, year Bailey was not on the card. No, she was not. Um, I I think if Bianca Bianca Belair gets cleared medically. Maybe it's a triple threat, potentially, um, to give it a different fl- to, to give it a different flavor than the SmackDown Women's Title match. But we're not, we don't know. Um, of course, the Mysterios versus the Miz and Logan Paul. You have Drew McIntyre, Drew McIntyre facing uh, Happy Corbin. Uh, the Usos defending the tag title SmackDown tag titles versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. And then, of mm-hmm. course, your main event for night one will be Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. Um, then night two, you have uh, Zelina and Carmella defending the Women's Tag Team Championships versus Sasha Banks and Naomi, Rhea, Lip- Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, and Natalia and Shayna Baszler. And I will I will say this, yo, I am all for a team of Natalia and Shayna Baszler because that's just pure destruction. I think that that is a good uh, as 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 much as I see, it, ladies and gentlemen, Padgy's face lit up like it was Christmas morning when he said that. So team. you the the when I found out when I saw that Natalia and Baszler were teaming up, it gave me those vibes of what the divas of destruction were. Yes. And it's Natalia bringing up someone who a couple years ago really got a raw deal. Oh, absolutely. Like, like you called that girl up. You had her eliminate everyone in an elimination chamber match, including Asuka. Yep. Oh, like, my it, God. Asuka. Like, like, 
this like this is the thing like to get side not sidetracked completely, but Shayna Baszler was so was built so dominantly in NXT. And then you call her up and you have her do the things that she does in like the Elimination Chamber and the Royal Rumble match. And she's never truly had a sniff at either of the women's championships on the main roster. She she had the Mania match in 2020, yep. which was, for lack of a better term, a, a, I don't want to say a phone in. But because we knew of the pending pregnancy, yep. you go back and you watch that match. You watch the build for that match. And then there is a moment where you realize it got less physical. Yeah. Yep. Like there was, there was the, the biting of the neck, there was the, the, the smashing the, of the, the face. The, the, the biting of the neck, the, the blood, the smashing of the face. And then all of a sudden it became, it became more promo-ish and that. Yep. And then all of a sudden you got to the match and it's like, there wasn't very much physical. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it was a wrestling match. It wasn't a fight. No, and I'm sorry. Tell, Someone bites me in the neck and ca- causes me to bleed. We fight. <laughs> yeah. And y- that was when the rumor was starting to spread like, oh, back pregnant. He's pregnant. Yeah. And then it's like, no. And then you go back and you watch that match. It just took very liberal bumps. Yep. Uh, if any, really. And yeah, you're right. Shayna Baszler hasn't had that real uh, defining uh, run no. at a and, title. And the thing is, Shayna Baszler, she Shayna Baszler gives you what Ronda Rousey's not giving you. Yes, Ronda Rousey's the name. OK, Ronda Rousey's Brock Lesnar, plain and simple. Yep. Come in, pop the crowd. Do what you got to do, and then we and then leaves again. Okay, Ronda's not in this for the money. Ronda's not in this for the fame. Ronda's just in this because uh, it get, it gives her a outlet to be physical without getting her ass whooped. Ass whooped essentially, and facing all the facing all the critics on on the internet. Yeah, but but there's yeah. the uh, there's the dynamic of. She uses that her. She uses the fact that she came from UFC and the mixed martial arts word world to this world and goes, I can pretty much do what the hell I want because I can't. She she has successfully done what a lot of people in that realm have tried to do and been okay at. Yeah. In that Rhonda was the first female in a in a in a fight in UFC. Dana White yep. famously was like women aren't going to fight here. And then Ronda Rousey started making uh waves and strike force and all of a sudden it was like okay, let's let's contemplate it. Can we bring this chick in and yeah. would it would it sell matches? And then it did. It put asses in seats famously. And then and it the- also Ronda along the way also put the other names the other names in there, just whether she won or lost in Misha Tate and Amanda Nunez and and so on. Holly Holm and yep. you, you know, there there was famously the, you know, the quote: Ronda Rousey's fights last as long as an Instagram story. Because at that time, it, Instagram stories were fifteen to twenty seconds, and yep. then, yeah, for a while, she had the aura of a Mike Tyson. Now, Shayna Baszler, not as famous, one of the four horsewomen of MMA. And actually, yep. it's funny. You go back and you see the clip of The Rock and Ronda uh, and in she's, San Francisco. She, she's, she's right she's next right to Ronda. Yeah. She's right next to Ronda cheering. And you're like, oh, it was like, Ronda. It was Ronda. Shane, it was Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, Justin Duke and Marina Schaffer. And it could have been so much bigger than it became. Now, not saying that that's not a p- potential. But Shayna Baszler hasn't had that chance. And if you look at this match as it's built right now, someone was like, man, Vince is just trying to get up everyone paydays. Or Vince is smart, and he's like, we have eight talented women. 
one of which is a veteran, put her with Shayna Baszler, bring Shayna Baszler up so that Ronda has someone to fight later this year. Yep. Because eventually the problem is, is that you're going to have uh, a Rhea Ripley issue where like you bring her up, you build her up. Really, Vince has got a, a four horsewomen problem where oh yeah, if it's not Bailey, if it's not Bailey, <laughs> if, Sasha, if, it's, if, if it's not Becky, Char- there isn't that there's like they like somewhere. I, I don't think it's so much Vince. Like, I don't think it's so much Vince as far as the women's division. I think, think it's, it's a talent problem. I think it's it's creative and it's a talent issue. Because there's one woman who who broke out of that mold. There's only been one. And I would love to see her. Oscar, if you're out there, we need you. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is and we stated we stated this ten times over multiple times. The pandemic built Asuka. Like it, yes. it allowed her just the the randomness that Asuka had, like with no crowds and the the promos and the yelling in the ring and the broken the, the, English. The, the commentary, the yeah. commentary table. Yep. <sighs> like the broken English and and everything. Like Asuka got herself over during the pandemic, plain and simple. Which ironically, um, due to my Facebook memories, it is now it was two years today that I got my off, like the office job I had, like had shut down. <laughs> can can so, we just like, comment that? Yeah. So I feel like, like when I saw that, I'm like, damn, it's really been two years. Wow. <laughs> my Facebook memory the other day was me posting about Gronk being the host of, of the pandemic yep. WrestleMania. Yep. And I'm just like, oh yeah, that was a thing for five minutes. And to, to, to slide from Gronk to Pat McAfee. Yeah. If yes. you would have told me yes. two Pat, years ago, Pat McAfee, uh, like I said, it, and what's, what's interesting. There's with this WrestleMania, there's a lot of celebrity aspect to it. Like I know in the past, there had been celebrity aspect to it. Night one, you have Logan Paul night two, you have Johnny Knoxville taking on Sami Zayn. And Pat McAfee facing Austin Theory. Which could end up becoming something bigger. And I have a theory on that. After this past Raw, where Austin Theory interjected himself into the Finn Balor match against Damian Priest, I don't think that they're willing to drop the title off of Balor at Mania. Nope. They're, they're, they, they, they are. They are. Because I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. The Jeff Hardy, the Jeff Hardy incident the Jeff Hardy incident and now seeing what has become like Jeff Hardy showing up on AEW, the office in WWE, whether it came from Vince, whether it came from triple H working from home, whether it comes from Stephanie, whoever, there are certain talents in WWE right now that they don't want to let go. Because and Finn Balor being one of them, because I'm going to tell yep. you this, if if Finn Balor gets released or leaves WWE, I guarantee you, you will see re- the return. And granted, he's brought back like the Prince, the Prince Divot character in in that Finn Balor form. But you're going to see a full, fully reform return to Prince Divot. Whether it's on AEW, whether it's in New Japan, and that first match is, and that guaranteed first match is going to be Bray Wyatt the or Wyndham Rotunda. Yeah, the thing that gets me is, and Wyndham is looking good. He was at a Legends he, showcase. He is. Wyndham is yep. looking goddamn good. The he thing is. that kills me is, is that uh, Finn Balor's reason for losing at Extreme Rules has been chalked up to drumroll, please. Visa issues. His work visa had issues for yeah. the last several months. Yeah. So they pulled him from the, the only logical thing they could do in the middle of this storyline was murder the demon. But yep, yep. Murder the demon. 
But the thing that I like is Pat McAfee had a really good showing with Adam Cole on NXT. Yep. But there was a lot of sizzle to that stake. It wasn't just Pat McAfee versus Adam Cole. It was the Undisputed Era. And Era McAfee's versus boys. McAfee. McAfee and McAfee. McAfee got three of the biggest brawl, like physical brawlers in Oni Larkin. Danny Birch and then Pete Dunn as well to yep. combat that. So the thought process going into this, in my opinion, is Damian Priest needs to be a heel. You need to build him up. Oh, yeah. Heel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Austin Theory is the face you just want to punch. And he has had good matches against Finn Balor. Damian Priest has had a Vince history McMahon of good loves matches. Austin Theory, by the way. He, he loves he, Austin Theory. He pictures Theory as being a main eventer within the next few years. And he could definitely do it as long as you can translate him over from the cell phone selfie gimmick to eventually like a, a, a person that you'd want to see. Damian yeah. Priest desperately needs to have that that heel. And honestly, do I see a cool combination of Pat McAfee? And the Demon King Finn Balor at WrestleMania. I'm not saying I want to see Pat McAfee paint himself up <laughs> for but, a WrestleMania match. But but if the two pack of action figures came out, yeah, it, it, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying I wouldn't buy. Them. Wouldn't buy it because there's also. There's also there's also still the rumor of Vince McMahon being involved in in some capacity with the McAfee theory contest as well. Hey, y'all, we are going to take a short break from the show real quick just to pay some bills. Uh, Please do us a favor. If you like what you hear, like what you see, please drop a subscription or follow to GearNetwork.com as well as the TTRP Turnbuckle Talk Radio podcast. That way you get notified when we have new episodes go up via your podcast services. Thank you. And now back to the show. Yeah, there's there's a lot swirling around this show and yeah. it, there's an excitement. And also, I'm just going to be honest. I am so glad they didn't break up RK Bro yet. Yeah. Uh, Randy Orton I, is having such a good time. I so you're going to have the Raw Tag Team Championship match, RK Bro versus the Street Profits. I don't I don't think that I don't believe RK Bro is going to break up. I know a lot of people expect it to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen because one, Randy Orton is having the time of his life right now. And Randy Orton will know when it's time for that to be over. Because for the most part, Matt Riddle has been the ever loving bro. Bro. Like, that guy, Matt Riddle, has not tapped into the UFC MMA fighter Matt Riddle that we saw. One of the best knockouts in Ultimate Fighter history. Yeah. Once again, YouTube, Matt Riddle, the Ultimate Fighter, top knockouts of all time. Matt yeah. Riddle, yes. Like, Matt Riddle has not gone into that 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 dynamic. Matt Riddle has been a, ver- a modern-day RVD. Like kind of just free will, bro, and, and the the scooters and the camels and the flip flops and he he is the he is the little brother. Yep, that hangs out with his older brother. Yep, who his older brother is like, I don't want to bring this asshole with me, and then his older brother suddenly starts realizing, like, all right, you're kind of cool, man. Yeah, he's and cool, you're, and you're funny. Yeah, and it's like, and not just that, but, uh, you know, like, let's, all right, fine, you can, look, I'm going to bring you along with me, but don't say anything stupid. What are you you doing on a fucking camel? Yep. Yep. What what, what do you do? Like, yep. And there was a moment there when they lost the titles where I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah. Like, like when they lost the titles, people were like, hmm. 
okay, here we go, here we go. And then they won the titles back, and I'm going, I think Randy's like, yo, we can make, like, this guy, I guarantee you, Randy went to Vince, or Randy went to Vince and said, give me, an, give me another six months with Riddle, and we will make him make him a star, make him a bigger star, and you will have a main event guy that can be the replacement to Brock Lesnar. Because which is something Le- that we because Lesnar about. has stated, Lesnar has stated that while Lesnar's having fun and loving what he's doing right now, he's not going to be doing this forever. We have it, the class of OVW. 2022 is or 20 2002. Thank you. Um, Batista is straight up Hollywood. Yep. John Cena. John Cena, John Cena is John Cena is Hollywood. John Cena is going to be in the same light as The Rock. Maybe a John, little, maybe more. a little bit different because yeah, I I think Cena once Cena gets a once Cena gets like a, because Cena is so, um, Peacemaker made Cena. Oh yeah, yeah. Peacemaker, Peacemaker made Cena. But Cena is is so, um, strict and to like his scheduling that I guarantee you that while John Cena may not be at WrestleMania. Mm. I, Potentially, maybe we don't know. Seth Rollins doesn't have an opponent. But we're 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 going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um, I don't. Well, I don't think Cena is going to make an appearance at Mania. He might be in the crowd for like the Hall of Fame or whatever. He he might make an appearance to be there, but he's not going to be like involved. I think he does. I think Cena does come back for a SummerSlam run. And may, and try and tries to come back and helps and help help make somebody else help make the make somebody else um, yes like he did like he did with Roman yep so Cena Cena's kind of like Cena's very much in that role that The Rock was but I feel like Cena's going to have more ability to come back and wrestle a legit program instead of kind of a one off deal. And I, I, I'm 100% with you on that in the fact that John Cena will be at WrestleMania next year in Hollywood. As oh, absolutely. Rock. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I, I do honestly believe that if they were to do a surprise John Cena versus Seth Rollins match, it would probably be shades of Undertaker versus John Cena a few years ago. Yep. A couple of quick bumps, nothing major. Yeah. John Cena never wants to phone it in, which I appreciate about John Cena's work. John Cena, if he's coming back, like the summer of Cena, he shows up, he works all summer long and then goes away. And the reason he did that was people wanted him at WrestleMania in Tampa. And he said, look, I'm up here filming Peacemaker. I need to do this. Yep. I can't just leave because of quarantine. And this show is important to me. Some yep. people balked at it until they got a taste of it. And then all of a sudden people are like, okay, yeah, we're, and then, we're good. And then he today. came back for the summer of Cena going after Roman and b- gave Roman that that true main like eventer. major main event victory yes. because it was clean and you look at <laughs> a lot of of what is going on leading into this WrestleMania and you're right John yo like it's weird to not have John but at the same token I'm okay with two WrestleManias in a row without John as long as we get the the major one later Seth Rollins not being involved in a match, but KO working with Stone Cold Steve Austin, potentially in some sort of a match. Yeah, it's a uh, confrontation. Confrontation, promo, yeah, Stone Cold something. coming out looking jacked as fuck, probably. Yeah, because if you haven't looked at, if you haven't seen Steve Austin recently, uh, he's looking jacked as all hell. He 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 been doing some things. He's been doing some things. Stone Cold has done a very good job of hiding, and in fact, I believe it was Chris Jericho on uh, a podcast recently said 
Yep. If you do not think Steve Austin has not been dieting in, in a gym for the last year. You do not know Stone Cold Steve Austin. Nope. <laughs> and you just kind of sit there and you're like, what does Jericho know? What does Jericho know that we don't know? But you have to think Jericho has been face to face with him recently. Yeah. Jericho's been Jericho's been face to face with him recently. And Jericho is still really good friends with Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. So you you know that he even was struggling some like I'm gonna watch this like because I guess I'm gonna watch because I guarantee you I guarantee you I guarantee it that had when the when Kevin Owens had that their contract negotiations Kevin Owens probably was like yo I'm I'm out the door like and I guarantee you Kevin Owens would have showed up on AEW with AEW and joined what Jericho's doing right now. I guarantee that. Yeah. Um, you look at the two stars that renegotiated their contracts. Both of them have huge matches at WrestleMania this yep. year. Yep. And they pro- and they probably looked at Kevin Owens and goes, "If we can make this happen, we'll give you Austin." And Owens is like, "Okay." And Sami Zayn and the Sami Zayn, it was like, we'll give you, we'll give you a high profile, whole high profile celebrity match that fits into the 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 gimmick you're doing right now with the conspiracy theory, Johnny Knoxville. And who? And honestly, he is of the same age as us, where it's like, dude, he watched Jackass, and oh, Jackass yeah. Forever was Jackass Forever knocked Spider Man off of the number one perch. Yep, it was a number one movie. It was. So, and of course, you know, dude, this entire WrestleMania, at first it seemed like it might be a dumpster fire. But, yeah. Like, we're looking at a really good show. Yeah. And then, of course, the night, the night two main event being Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, winner takes all. <laughs> Where Cody Rhodes doesn't run in. <sighs> yeah. Well, speaking of Cody Rhodes, <laughs> um, guess, it, are we are we ending the podcast on Cody? Because that oh no be- no we're not no we are far from ending. Um, we are far from ending. Uh, speaking of Cody, it has been uh, reported that Cody has officially signed a WWE contract within the last ten to fourteen days. Uh, he will be making his debut at WrestleMania. Most likely in a match against Seth Rollins. Which, by the way, let's see, what do you feel about that? Like you, when just talking about it earlier, you, do you think this is going to be a barn burner? Do you think this is going to be like a 15 to 20 minute match where they both match skill for skill, move for move? Or do you feel like this is going to be like, he's not coming back as American Nightmare Cody Rhodes that he's been for the last like four or five years, he's coming back as whatever Vince wants. I, okay. So I have, I have two feelings towards this. If he comes in and as it's been reported that he's going to come in and get a big push, big push. And he's going to be a main attraction. If he comes in like that, then he will come in as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. If he comes in as something dumb and stupid or or as you put it, whatever Vince wants, then I'm going to go here is your first I'm not comparing it to I'm not comparing it to the Lex Luger thing. I'm not comparing it to Razor Ramon walking on on Nitro. But all the all the releases, all the defections, so to speak, of, of the, as as the wrestling community out there call it, the WWE guys to AEW, uh, John Moxley, Brian Danielson, uh. Uh, formerly known as 2.0 at uh, Big Show, Mark Henry, and that. This Cody Rhodes showing up would be kind of the, and most recently, Jeff Hardy. 
um, Cody Rhodes is kind of that first true shallow of somebody going going from AEW to WWE. And yes, for the, did did Cody Rhodes make most of his career in WWE? Absolutely, not going to not going to dispute that. But Cody left because he was he was he was unfilled or didn't like the way, didn't like the storyline, didn't want to be the Stardust character, went out, wrestled for New Japan, wrestled for ROH, built himself a name. He built him, he helped build another company that has grown to a legitimate, like number two, one A type situation in, in United States pro wrestling, as far as wrestling companies go. You need you need Cody Rhodes to come in as the American nightmare. You bring him in as something else and it's going to fall flat because this is your because a, as we're going to discuss it, the John Cena comments recently about AEW. If you bring Cody Rhodes in and it falls flat, you you don't have that shot back at AEW. AEW, I'm and Everybody can say yes, ratings and everything, but AEW's on different nights. They they go Wednesdays and Fridays after SmackDown. Their pay per views are usually on a Saturday or Sunday night, which depends. Okay, but they're never they're never at the same time, or they're never a week after a WWE pay per view or a week. And they also before. are quarterly. They are yes. a quarterly company. Yes, so. If Vince McMahon loves, and if you even look at the Pat McAfee interview with Vince McMahon, and Vince McMahon talked AW, he talked ROH, he talked Impact, he talked he talked the competition. He did because that was that was Vince McMahon, the businessman. That wasn't Vince McMahon, the character. That was Vince McMahon, CEO of WWE, discussing that the Cody Rhodes. It cannot fall flat because there are so many people in the internet wrestling community that are honkering and want another wrestling war. For the most part, I have hold I have held this I have held this stance from day one. From day one when AEW was created. I said if anybody goes to AEW from the WWE, it they are not a WWE guy. They because it's not because AEW is a wrestling company. So if anybody goes, you're going to see the wrestlers go: Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish. the The two big names, the two, and the two names that are on a constant wrestling basis. That are WWE guys, in my opinion, as far as AEW, Christian, Jeff Hardy. That's it. Big, big show. Big show had a match, whatever, handoff, whatever. Mark Henry hasn't wrestled. They're mainly in a very veteran status, kind of helping as agents, whatever may be the case, because of their yep. knowledge in the business. And learning how to time out TV and, and the and, stuff that guys yeah. from the independents just, which argue if you want. One of the things you always hear about is like timing out television and making yep. sure that you stick to your, your, your a lot of time and sponsors and all the other stuff. Yep. And that's stuff that guys on the independents didn't real who made up a lot of AEW oh, oh, locker yeah. room at the beginning, yep. didn't know how to do. Then you bring in these guys who, have Everyone worked television like have worked television for 20 plus years and, exactly. and know how to do this because for the most part yeah like outside outside because if you really look at the beginning of AEW Kenny Omega what wrestled primarily New Japan which you you want to have an hour and 20 match go right ahead whatever we don't care yeah um you had the young bucks at the young bucks who had wrestled for American television before and impact and ROH, but not to the extent of what AEW needed to be. 
needed no, it. No offense to them. The first pay-per-view all out, yep. or all in, it ran went off the air to, yeah, thank you. It, it went it. long. It went long. It went long. It because went, and, and in the there world was of television, no. no. People, people went over their times. Um, so back to the thing. This, and yes, okay, Cody Rhodes grew, like, started WWE. He left. He made a bigger name for himself. He joined up. He started a whole nother company. Granny, yes, Tony Khan provided the money and the financial backing, but Cody Rhodes was a fourth of the brainchild of AEW. It was Cody, it was, hey, it was Omega, and it was the Young Bucks that, that created All Out, that All Out show. Because the thing is, is you had, you had Kenny Omega being the star from New Japan and everything. He had the, and, and having the five star, six star matches and all that. You had the Young Bucks who, Young Bucks, while wrestling television, while wrestling on TV, they they were mostly known as a independent act. They were mostly known because of their work independently through Shikara, PWG, and that. And then you have Cody, who has spent 10 plus years in the machine and knows what needs to be done as far as a production aspect for it to look good and come off as clean and crisp and and everything. And like, all of which we're creating an alternative to the product that we have been given since 2002. Exactly. Because one has to take into consideration Impact did try and make a go of it in 2010. They did. They did. And unfortunately, okay. unfortunately, unfortunately, at the time when Impact made a go of it, People were, it had only been nine years since the end of WCW and people were going, oh, great, Bischoff and Hogan again and yeah. Rus and Russo. And, and while you had a lot of talent in, in, in TNA, Jeff Jarrett, AJ Styles, uh, Beer Money, uh, Team yeah. Canada, Abyss, the X Division, you had, you had a lot of talent. They were very young. They were very young and inexperienced to what a national branded television wrestling show is. And a lot of people didn't know about them because it was because a lot of people automatically saw the names Eric Bischoff Hogan and were like, oh, great. They're just going to push their buddies. And I also think that it's one of those interesting things which started to happen, let's be honest. But yeah. another thing that has happened with the, the creation of AEW is you have chances for guys to rewrite the end of their story. Yep. And I'm, I'm mentioning this because of the beautiful article that Sting wrote. Yes. Which I am a little stinger, even though I'm 40. Um, and I will go out there and say that that was uh, an insight into the mind of Sting that even I didn't realize. And his passion for wrestling didn't end when he took a buckle bomb. His passion was there. He wanted more than just being a name that got brought out when you needed a segment on TV to honor yep. a guy. Yep. And that was not what he was being given. And I know in 2020. And as we can see, Sting can still go. Let's just talk about the fact that 62 year old man jumped 63. off the balcony. Through, 63 year old man jumped off the balcony through six tables onto a guy and then was back on TV three nights later. Let's talk about the fact that Sting, yeah. Sting up until CM Punk showed up, had the quickest selling T-shirt in 24 yep. hours in the history of pro wrestling tees. With yep. a t-shirt that it took me a month and a half to get, and I ordered it that night. Let's yep. talk about the fact that <laughs> AEW can put guys with ta with exposure to the business with younger talent yep. and get them over, which was kind of, I believe, what TNA lacked. Yeah, a TNA absolutely lacked that. And this and this is and this comes back to Cody Rhodes. 
Cody Rhodes, when he started in WWE, was put with Randy Orton. He was he was put under somewhat under someone's wing that had been groomed himself by Ric Flair and Triple H. Because you because what you did is you took Cody Rhodes, who had all that grooming being under Dustin and his father Dusty. Now you're mixing it with the knowledge of Triple H and Ric Flair, and you're putting it all together. And Cody Rhodes is a businessman. He learned from his father. He learned he learned from the thing. If Cody Rhodes comes in as something as, as dumb and stupid and it falls flat, it's at that point, it's like at that point, okay, you're not going to save it unless somehow you get a big name. Uh, and and I'm sorry. If the Cody Rhodes debut falls flat, where Cody ju- and and it's not that Cody jumped ship. Cody, Cody, Cody contract ended, could not come to terms. Same thing. It, it's not anything different than what John Moxley had had done. It's not any different than what Brian Danielson did. Their contracts came came to end. They could not come to terms. They left. They went somewhere else. It's not jumping ship or anything Uh, the days of jumping ship and that are done like they're done yeah okay it's people are going to work out their contracts when it comes to negotiation time decide whether they want to stay or stay or go case in point adam cole case in point kyle o'reilly case in point cesaro okay work to their contract then did not come to terms they they Mutually parted left ways. Respectfully. Ref, Res- left yeah. respectfully. Yeah. Respectfully parted ways with the company that they were at. If the Cody Rhodes debut falls flat and does not create the buzz that it should, the only way that WWE is ever going to be viewed as a threat or competent, and I'm not, because like we said, WWE is sports wrestling, sports entertainment with pro wrestling. AEW is pro wrestling with sports entertainment. That's mm-hmm. been that's been decided. Are they in competition with each other? Sure. Yeah. Ratings. Great. Awesome. But in the wrestling world, if the Cody Rhodes debut falls flat, the only way that WWE is going to recover is one of two ways. Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega. Plain and simple. No one else. I, no one else is going to be able to create the buzz that WWE needs for somebody coming from AEW. I will. I will one thousand percent agree with that. And the reason I will agree with that is John Cena's recent comments about competition and how he views AEW and how it's always good to have external competition. And if John Cena, who has been the face of WWE for the last two decades, is going out there and throwing that kind of high praise. And The Rock has done the same. Yep. Yep. Uh, Triple H has acknowledged it. Vince McMahon has acknowledged it. If there, if if you want to say, hey, we, we got him. Kenny Omega, the cleaner. Okay. The the one-winged angel. Everything you want to say about him. Uh, the, 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 the six-star man. If all of these things are what you need to say to get, some steam away from them you ain't pulling punk nope okay you're not pulling any of the pillars in fact if anything they're doubling down on the pillar strength oh yeah of what they've got like you're you're you know you're not you're i'm gonna tell you now you're not touching Britt baker you're not you're you're not touching darby allen nope you're not touching sammy guevara nope you might you might might be able to sniff at mjf Maybe M- MJF will be. Yeah, MJF is a couple years off though because he's a couple years off, and MJF is still young, twenty five years old. He's yeah. he's he needs a couple more years to 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 ruminate, to bake, yep, to ferment. If he were a fine wine, uh, and you're definitely not gonna. You might get an Orange Cassidy, but I don't think they would know what to do with a guy like Orange Cassidy. No, not at all. They they would have 
they would have no clue at all. Um, that it, it's um, apparently, apparently, uh, uh, Paul Heyman posted something on Twitter a day or two ago, yesterday or the day before, and it kind of alluded to potentially Moxley. And because apparently Moxley's contract's coming up in AEW. Do I, do I think Moxley returns to WWE? Mm-hmm. No. So the, the problem with the Mox, uh, yeah, the problem because, with the Mox. Because, because if Moxley decides to go back to WWE, it eliminates everything that he does outside of AEW. Like going to New Japan and facing Will Ospreay. Yeah, exactly. Or doing blood um, sport. And the other thing is, if you go back, and mind you, Vince McMahon has taken guys back, and he has admitted this, for, for the betterment of business. Yeah. If you go back and you look at some of those chapters that Moxley released in his book last October. Yeah. Oh, my. If you go back to that that talk is Jericho. Yep. If you go back, and I mean, I don't often say brutal. Those were brutal interview, like brutal segments. Yeah. Even Roman Reigns' recent comments about like, you're never going to have a shield reunion because Moxley had to go and ruin it. And you sit there and you're like, dude, are you killing me right now? Yep. Like, who? Like, no offense, dude. Like, of the three of you, of the three of you, Moxley was arguably the best oh yeah he, arguably the best yep and i mean i'm not saying that for any particular reasons other than it took seven years to get roman reigns over it did it did uh seth rollins ended the quote ended the career of sting and broke john cena's face all in one summer and, yep <laughs> okay. Oh, and Finn Balor ended that entire run in like less than 24 hours. Yep. Uh and and hey y'all, we are gonna take a short break from the show real quick just to pay some bills. Uh please do us a favor if you like what you hear, like what you see, please drop a subscription or follow to gearnetwork.com as well as the TTRP Turnbuckle Talk Radio Podcast. That way you get notified when we have new episodes go up via your podcast services. Thank you. And now back to the show. Did the longest reigning women's champions run with one good sperm? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was that was a joke, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not attacking any man and their kids. No, not joke. at all. Yeah, you know, that and they have, have and they have a very and they have a very cute baby. They have an adorable kid. We're we're tongue in cheek here in some fashions, but you have to look at it. It's like when it came to to fan to a built in fan base, this Moxley showed up as Dean Ambrose with the better one, but yeah, he he came with one. But you have to look at what he has said post WWE. Yeah. For the men- for the mental health of John Moxley, do I want to see him go back to WWE? Nope. nope. No. Is he the one guy that could show up and beat Roman Reigns for the titles and yes. have it be believable? Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. He, Plain and simple. He could he could show up as John Moxley with Wild Thing playing in the back, not Dean Ambrose. As John Moxley, yep, and walk out on Monday Night Raw, and you would have Paul Heyman or SmackDown, whatever show, and you would have, you would have Paul Heyman sell that like it was the return of Cactus Jack Jesus. Yep, it yeah, absolutely, and and this is the thing. It it's it's funny how we're. Now, because with the news that Cody Rhodes is officially signed with WWE, like I said, if it falls flat, it's not like you're gonna people are gonna go, 
wow, you got you guys convinced convinced Cody Rhodes to come back here, w- giving him whatever whatever agreements or whatever they whatever the contract terms was and everything, and you gave and it fell flat. Like there was there was nothing, and. Especially and especially if his debut is going to be Mania, you already have you have mass you have major matchups. You have age you have Edge facing AJ Styles, you yep. have Brock you have Brock and Roman, you have Charlotte you have Charlotte and Ronda. Um, you have some major matches and then filled in with s- some fun. Fun matches and everything. McAfee versus Theory, Zane versus Knoxville, um, and, and Austin KO. Yeah, Austin. The segment with Austin and KO. Like, like it has to be something. It has to be something big. It it has to be. And what that that simple as that? Because otherwise, otherwise, in my personal opinion, you're never going to get. As much buzz as you've gotten with the story about signing Cody Rhodes, outside of Chris Jericho returning, and the and I guarantee you the only way Chris Jericho and the let me let me put this this way Chris Jericho still has a very good relationship with Vince McMahon. Okay, mm-hmm. plain and simple they they have a very good relationship. I think Chris Jericho does return to WWE someday. For at least one more run and the Hall of Fame introduction, because yeah. because plain and simple, the man is the man is the uh, is the initial universal heavyweight or undisputed heavyweight champion after beating Stone Cold and The Rock in the same night. Okay, plus he's had multiple multiple Hall of Fame matches with multiple people ten times over. Jericho will go into the WWE Hall of Fame at some point, and he will return for at least one more run. Kenny Omega, outside outside of Kenny Omega, there's really no one in, in AEW that will give you that buzz, that oh my god, holy shit feeling that you got when you saw Lex Luger show up on Monday Night Show, when you saw, when saw you Scott saw Hall walk, walk through the crowd. Or uh, in recent times, AJ Styles showing up at the Royal Rumble. Yep. I mean, like AJ Styles now is synonymous with WWE. Yeah. Like exactly. there's 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 going to be a large portion of the fan basis that only remembers him AJ as WWE as WWE. With that being said, though, do I do I feel like? This will fall on Vince McMahon and creative. This will not fall on Cody Rhodes not being a main eventer. I know that there's nope. a lot of people who are like, oh, Cody Rhodes was never that big. Shut up. Sh- just shut up now because you are all about AEW. It just became the cool thing to boo Cody Rhodes. Yep. Now, mind you, Cody didn't book himself as champion, did he? No. Nope. Well, TNT champion, but he didn't book himself as the main champion. And so. and the thing is, is Cody only Cody only really booked himself as the TNT champion to give credits to the belt to build to build it up for someone else to take it from him, like a Brody, like yeah, like Brody Lee, or and then he only took it back because he had to have somebody else built up, Sammy Guevara, and he had an amazing run, and that. That ladder match that he and Sammy had was insane. Exactly, and that was a good swan song. Yeah, the, absolutely. The, the thing, the thing that gets me with with this is, it will not fall on Cody Rhodes. No, it will fall. Eight percent battery, as far as all right, my phone. Yeah. Okay, we'll wrap uh, it up. This this will not fall on Cody Rhodes. This will fall on creative because this would have been essentially. How can I imagine if they would have stolen Goldberg in '98? Yep. Yep. Or this would. Yeah. 
it, it's essentially it's essentially Goldberg or or WCW getting Shawn Michaels or The Undertaker. Yes. And to me, one of the things that fans need to or WWE getting luring Sting over in 97. Yeah. Or early 98. I think that it could have the potential of being a huge success for WWE if Cody is booked properly. Yep. If and he's not. And, and, <laughs> a sp- Especially, especially with what with the momentum that AW continues to just steamroll with everything. There's the way their storylines are just like built. Coming off, coming off the Revolution pay per view, the turn, the turn of Wardlow, uh, the the Thunder Rosa, Thunder Rosa, and Britt Baker, uh. Chris, the Chris Jericho, Eddie Kingston dynamic. Now Chris Jericho, the the destruction of the inner circle. Now Chris Jericho has the Jericho appreciation thing, and looking to essentially do, looking to essentially do what he did for Sammy Guevara and Ortiz and Santana with now Daniel Garcia and 2.0. And he's going to do it all over again because Chris Jericho now is the sports entertainer influencer. Yeah. He's the entertainer. Which, oh my God, (laughs) the memes that like the the Western New York uh, wrestling community put up after that Daniel Garcia promo about being a sports entertainment entertainer. It was, it was fantastic. All of Buffalo better be like marking out when he wins his first title. Oh, absolutely. Because it's going to happen sooner than later. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen it, real soon. Yeah. Yeah. He he's going to he's going to he's going to have the title. And then of course you have now this Oh my god. I I when when William Regal came out, I was like <laughs> I was like, "Here, take my money." Because this pantheon of violence of Regal Danielson and Moxley. I'm just like, I'm all for it. And Regal's promo. Yes. I think people forgot that that man could cut a promo, but I don't think that was so much of a promo as much as he was being honest. He's already outlived his life expectancy. He doesn't see him. Considering uh, coming off the last uh, Chris Jericho podcast, he's already, he, he, he's like almost doubled his expectancy in pro wrestling because coming off that interview, he said, he, he's like, yo, if I could have a 20 year career, cool. He's coming on 30. He's at 39. And the, the best part about it is, is that promo was if you bifurcated William Regal and took the brawler and the wrestler and equally separated them, here you go. Yep. And I watched that promo and I'm like, Jesus Christ, that is so beautiful. And, and and consider and also considering the rumors that eventually there will be a trios title in, put into place in AEW. I'm sorry to say this. I'm calling it now. Cesaro, when and if Cesaro comes, he's going to join that faction. Uh, double or nothing's coming up. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, I know. It's <laughs> it, it's it's you're going. It's gonna be because if you listen to the to, to the Talk Is Jericho podcast with William Regal, he mentions Danielson, Moxley, and Cesaro as the th- as like the three guys that helped him finish out his career, and. Yo, I'm I'm all for it, and the fact that that man has the bevy of knowledge that he does, and truth be told, I, I I'm I know we, you listen to our podcast, you guys listen to us and everything, and I appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button and that, but listen to that talk is Jericho episode because the fact that William Regal is still alive and with us with everything that he went through, holy shit. 
I mean, we we seem to forget because we gloss over it that he passed out while standing in the middle of a ring doing a promo because he was so pilled up. Yeah, like the, like from because I'm like when he talked about he he essentially had a broken neck for twenty mm-hmm. something years. Yeah, like and then holy, Google and, William Regal neck X-ray. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's right not now. fun. It's not fun. It's not fun. Um, but yeah, just AEW, like AEW has like so much. And now um, it seems like Sammy Guerrero is taking a little time off. Uh, you have Scorpio Sky with the TNT Championship. You now have the further developments of MJF for War- versus Wardlow. Which is now building, which is now giving MJF another dynamic. Um, it seems like AEW's starting to kind of try to eliminate all these factions that they had a little bit, or or maybe yep. or not so much, not so much have these like huge factions, but more kind of like smaller, smaller like types. buddies. Yeah, yeah, like like buddies, like like honestly, you're never gonna see Darby Allen without Sting. No, nope. yeah, that's, you're. That's just you're, a te- and, that's a that's a team. You're you're never gonna see Adam Cole without Red Dragon. Nope, you're never going to see. I, I did. The I best did, friends. Yep, I did love. I did love the the little the little. Uh, Darkness in darkness in the shadow of from the with the promo from the 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 cut with the young bucks and they're leaving the locker room and the guy's holding the jacket and it's Adam Pages from the pay per view like that little teaser that hang hangman and hangman and the bucks could reunite potentially yeah and like. <laughs> Because I'd rather see Adam Cole as an uber heel, especially than with Red Dragon, a lukewarm yeah. babyface. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd rather see I'd rather see a red hot heel than a lukewarm babyface. Rob. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Because Adam Cole's a better hell of a like nothing against the Young Bucks because they're really great heels, but they could be really good faces as well. Um. Yep. But like just. AEW is just on a momentum roll. And then, of course, you throw in the fact that you have you have Super Card of Honor coming up with ROH. The, you're you're going to see, you're finally going to get FTR versus the Briscoes. Um, I guarantee you Deanna Peraza is going to defend the ROH championship against probably maybe somebody from the end of, somebody from the ROH roster women-wise. Maybe even somebody from a- the AEW women roster potentially. Like there's like Tony Khan o- owning two companies at one time and booking both of them. Maybe he gets burned out, but maybe it could be a really good thing because n- because now you're you can toss talent back and forth. And the best part about it is, is like you said, it gives us the Briscoes versus uh, FTR. Yep. I mean. One of one of the things is we knew at the beginning of this year that there was going to be a restructuring for Ring of Honor. Yes. They announced it in December when they said that they were closing their doors. This restructuring might be a good thing in that, hey, this could be two completely separate rosters. Or With this could be like two sim- or two companies just kind of sharing certain aspects of the rosters. Which because I would I think, be okay with because, because I think what happens ROH guys I, that, because I think what happens with ROH now with Tony Khan is they also go back into a slight agreement with Impact because and then you have the trifecta AEW Impact and ROH and even because, better than that I'm just or the square I mean, because you can also add New Japan to that. I was just about to say. I mean, you got Rocky Romero showing up. You got the, the you got the four corners because because essentially at that point you have the four corners: New Japan, AEW, ROH, Impact, all working together. Which then at some point, at some point, we all know, like 
at some point, I think, um, and I know Triple H has had a lot of heart issues, and that's why he's not doing, he's no longer, like, in charge of the NXT and everything, because he's had a lot of heart issues. Like, it's been reported, it's been verified. But maybe if those four, those you have those four corners, maybe at that point, WWE it just goes... At some point down the road goes, all right, fuck it, throw in the flag. Let's work together. Yep. And I mean how do, first off, two things. You throw Ring of Honor pay-per-view when you put CM Punk in the main event, his Ring of Honor return. Oh God. You're welcome. You're welcome yeah. for me even just saying that. Yep. Secondly. Yep. You have Triple H show up on AEW television and you have him and Tony Khan shake hands and say, let's have some fun. And then you have especially especially going Tana into Hati. like survive, especially going into like Survivor Series time. And you have Triple H who wouldn't have the ego of my guys have to go over, pal. It would be okay. You know what? So how do how do we get Okada versus John Cena? Yep. 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 That's exactly that's yep, like punk. Sorry. Okay. Cool. Main event night one. Right yep. at WrestleMania. What 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 we're sorry. Yep. You may you may you 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 had and that and shoot, truth be told, like you go you survivor series or even mania and you go, okay, cool. You know what? We need a four four corners tag match. Hardys, Usos, New Day, FTR. Yeah. Or you finally give the fans what they kind of clamored to see for almost a decade now. And, and the Bucks, New, the New, Day, versus versus New, New Day. Day versus the Elite. Yep. Let let you you want to make it a thing? Yep. Well, let's do it. And let's then at that it. point, you take the you take the new day out of that four fatal four way tag match, and you put the Briscoes in it. Yep. And then all of a sudden, see, this is this is stuff that I would like to see in the next couple of years. Um, you know, we'll see if Vince McMahon lives forever. <laughs> if Vince McMahon lives forever, he's a he's officially a vampire, and he's in more. <sighs> like, if, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say this. Knock on wood. Vince McMahon has like been in charge since I've been a baby. Essentially, I have seen the growth of WWF into WWE. If Vince McMahon, I I think he's seventy six right now. Yeah, 76, 70, 77. If Vince Listen McMahon up. is a ninety year old man still producing television on Monday Night Raw on a weekly basis in in fifteen years. At that point, I'm going, you're a vampire, sir. Where's the fountain of youth? I'm telling you what this world needs. We need another Sasha Banks and Charlotte <laughs> match. Make it happen. Sasha, Sasha versus Charlotte. Sa- no, th- th- at that point, at that point, uh, Sasha, Becky, Bailey, and, and Charlotte will all be in their like early 50s, and we'll finally get the fatal four way, four horsemen women, four, oh my four horse women match. With, the, with all of their kids sitting front row. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or, or, no, better, better yet, we'll, uh, better yet, what was it, WrestleMania 2000? Yeah. So, WrestleMania, so the 40th anniversary of WrestleMania 2000, the four horse women corner match, their kids in the corner. Oh my God! And Dominic will have who? Who? What wrestle? Dominic will fight for the custody of his kid against the Miz. Yes. Yes. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like the just like we're just gonna rehash stuff from like forty years ago. That, that's what this we're is, doing. This, but Moxley is still blackballed. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but that's. Okay, that was that was fun. Uh, but that's gonna do it for us. Uh, we have officially gone two hours, a little over. Eh, we got we had to catch up, so y'all enjoy. This was a this was a good catch up episode. We'll we'll give you a smaller one next week. A little, uh, yeah, a, 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 an appetizer. Ap- appetizers, appetizers, appetizers. Um. So, but 
please, everybody, if you like what you hear, like what you see, uh, hear what you see, uh, please drop that subscribe, hit that follow, so you know when the new episodes drop. Uh, we are going to get back on to our regularly scheduled programming because Mondays, 6.05, when that new episode drops, this episode will be dropping then, and then from here on out, Monday, 6.05, because uh, I feel like Sundays is a good day to record. Um, Sunday's a good day. It's the Lord's Day. It is. It is. It is. Uh, so, and plus, Sunday mornings kind of work because, like, we're not doing anything. We're not, like, you're not in the gym. I'm not doing my thing. So, no. and then this way, the episode dropped Monday, 6.05, because we are WCW Saturday night marks we're, we're old as fuck we are you know what and that's perfectly fine he's got a village Atlantic club shirt i got a turtle shirt we're rocking it enjoy your sunday uh but be safe be kind be healthy we will see you on the flip side thank you for listening to the turnbuckle talk radio podcast today we appreciate and thank you for your continued listenership if you'd like what you hear please follow us or subscribe to the podcast via gearnetwork.com backslash TTRP, where you can access the show via Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast services where your podcast can be found. Please follow us as well on social media at facebook.com backslash Trimble Call Talk Radio Podcast and on Twitter at TBTR Podcast. We also ask you to please hit the subscribe button so you get the notification when the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at 6.05 Eastern Standard Time. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by The Gear Network.